Today we're um, uh, finishing up the series on uh, perceptions and limitations. Perceptions and limitations. We, we have a lot of perceptions of God that aren't true. And we have a lot of perceptions about ourselves that are not true. And we have uh, a lot of limitations that we put on God. And there's some lim- limitations that we put on ourselves too. And we need to seek truth and all those things. And when I was um, uh, studying through the Word of God, as I normally do, sometimes I'll just get to a passage, and when I find that passage, I just stop and dig down. Because I want to know what God has that's real and relevant and, and right for me at that moment. And when God started to speak, uh, I started to see all the limitations that we're putting upon God. And, and Jesus, when He began His ministry came and humbled himself. He lowered himself and and was baptized, showing his death, burial, and resurrection from the very beginning of his ministry. And then he went out, led by the Holy Spirit, to the wilderness, and there Lucifer came and tempted him. And he battled those. And when I started thinking about that and and the temptations that came upon him and and all of the things that we fall into, and I just just said, Lord, this is something I, I really believe that you want us to do. So if you have your Bible, stand up with us in uh, God's Word. In Matthew chapter number 4, we're going to be looking at the third temptation that Lucifer brought against Jesus. Are you there? Say amen. We have, I think, 11 different scriptures today. Can I just give you a, a, a word right off the bat? I normally don't do that. It's hard to sit in a service and hear someone read Scripture. I usually just take one passage and I just walk my way through that passage. But what we're sharing about, I think, is so important today that you don't really need to hear a word that you might interpret from me. I really want it to be a straight word from the, from the truth of God. So we're going to look at a lot of passages and hopefully the Lord will meet us there And it'll be a wonderful time. The Holy Spirit will just brag on Jesus, and it'll be a great time. All right? So let's look in verse number eight. Again, the devil took him, that is Jesus, up on an exceedingly high mountain and showed him all the kingdoms of the world and their glory. And he said to him, all these things I will give you if you will fall down and worship me. Jesus said to him, I don't know how long you pause, probably not long. Away with you, for it is written, you shall worship the Lord your God, and him only you shall serve. Quoting Deuteronomy 6. One God, and you shall worship him, and him alone. Let's pray. Our Father, I pray that in the next few moments that you would take my words and your word and make them one. Father, may I not say anything that you do not amen and approve in the hearts of these people. But Lord, we need you. You are worthy of our worship and our praise. So Father, I just pray that in the next few moments that you would make yourself a real, that you would make yourself real and alive. And Lord, we would be so blessed if you would just draw us to yourself. Lord, we need you. Oh, we need you. Every hour, every moment, we need you. Father, bless as only you can. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. You may be seated. This all began when one of God's choice creations had an incomplete perception of himself and of God. He was created perfect, and he stood in the presence of the pure glory of God. What a wonder that was. He could be there with all the other creations. Genesis 1-1, in the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. A perfect God does not know how to do anything imperfect. So he created a, a perfect creation. And, and we define everything by time, but they were in, uh, 
I almost, when I was studying this, y'all, there was a movie called The Land Before Time. They stole that. And I was thinking of a, 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 a there's that, that line that goes, the story begins a long, time, a long, long time ago in a galaxy far, far away. They stole that too, amen? But there was a time before time because time started clicking when Adam and Eve sinned. But before that, everything was perfect that was there. And, and we don't know how long that they were there, but every one of God's creations, the, all of nature, the cherubim, the seraphim, the archangels and the angels, they all served God out of the, the, the purpose of their life. They all did it in the glory of God for His glory and His glory alone. But one of those creations, he saw the pure glory of God, and then he looked at himself, and he thought to himself, you know, I deserve that same glory. Truth is seeing the pure glory of God, and then seeing our own true self, and seeing and believing and repenting and trusting and receiving God's gift to you without coveting His glory. We can see the glory of God. We can receive the glory of God without coveting that glory because every time we covet the glory of God, it always leads to loss. Always leads to loss. So truth is knowing God and being rightly related to Him. Blessings is knowing God and being rightly related to Him. The God life, the blessed life, eternal life, is knowing God and walking in that. All of God's creations were at peace. Everyone knew their purpose and was living it. The two greatest things, two greatest days in, in every person's life. Number one was the day that you were conceived. And secondly is the day that you realized why. You have a God-given purpose. And you need to find that and fulfill it. It is the greatest joy of your life. Walking through life just without, just haphazardly along is not the way God wants it. You were created uniquely and, and on purpose and you need to find out what that is and serve Him. One of those creations was Lucifer. And when he saw the glory of God, he wanted the same thing. In Isaiah chapter, chapter number 14, the Bible says this about Lucifer. Listen. How you are fallen from heaven, O Lucifer, son of the morning. Did you notice that? Fallen. You were here but now you're no longer. How you are cut down to the ground, you who weaken the nations. For you have said in your heart, this is what began with the thoughts in the heart of Lucifer. Thoughts that created feelings, that created bad choices for him. Listen to what he said to himself. I will ascend into heaven. I will exalt my throne above the stars of God. I will also sit upon the mount of the congregation on the farthest side of the north. I will ascend above the heights of the clouds. I will be like the Most High. Did you notice that? I will. I will. I will. I will. I will. But we can't unless we have the power and the authority to do it. There's a lot of things we may promise, but we can't deliver. And Satan truly thought when he saw himself in glory, that he could. He thought he was as good as God. So here is his statement. Here is his declaration of independence from God. He said, I will ascend into heaven. In Ezekiel, in the Psalms, and especially in Revelation 4, it talks about Jesus with his throne being lifted up, high and lifted up, a sea of glass separating the two. Being in the very presence of God. But here he says, I will ascend. I'll be up there with you. He said, I will exalt my throne, my power, my authority. I'll take that and I'll lift it up above all the stars of God. I'll be the greatest of all of God's creation. No seraphim, no cherubim, no archangel, no angel. None of God's creation will be like me. I also will sit 
upon the mountain of the congregation. One of the names for our Lord God is He is Jehovah. He is the Lord of hosts. He's the Lord of all. But that's what Lucifer wanted. Lucifer said, I'll be the God of all. He said, I will ascend above the heights of the clouds. He said, I'll be greater than all of God's creation. Listen, he said, I'll be the God of all creation. I will be like the Most High. There was only one on the throne. There was only one that the angels sang, Holy, 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 Lord God Almighty, who was and is and is to come. And Satan said, no, 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 I deserve that as well. And when we seek the glory of God for ourselves, it always leads to loss. Look at verse 15. Yet you shall be brought down to Sheol, that is to the grave, to the lowest depth of the pit. Those who see you will gaze at you and consider saying, is this the man who made the earth tremble, who shook kingdoms? You see, they'll see the fallen state. Lucifer was created to be in the presence of God. But his sin, his pride, made him fall from that. Now, there was a time that he was in heaven and on earth. And then there was a time that he was cast down from that. We'll talk about that in just a moment. He said, is this the man who made the earth tremble? Look in verse 17. Who made the world as a wilderness, destroyed its cities, who did not open the house of the prisoners? Look what Jesus said about this in Luke chapter 10. Jesus had taken his disciples, 70 of them, and he had gifted them. He had given them power and authority. He had given them a job to do, and he sent them out two by two. And they went and preached the, the kingdom of God is at hand. And when they found need, they met the need. They healed the sick. They cast out demons. So when they came back, in verse 17 it said, Then the seventy returned with joy. You always get joy when you're doing what God's called you to do. He said, saying, Lord, they're amazed at this. Even the demons are subject to us in your name. They knew it wasn't who they were. They knew that when they were they were called of God, sin of God to do the mission of God, the power of God would be with them. So they knew that, that the, the demons, could you imagine the powers and the principalities, the, the, the rulers of this world, that they are even subject to God's people when they're doing their, God's will in, in God's name? He said, in verse 18, Jesus said to them, I saw Satan, the deceiver, the liar. I love what the New American Standard says about Satan. It said he's the liar and the father of all lies. It says when he speaks, he speaks his own native language. He's a liar. He's a liar. He said, I saw Satan fall like lightning from heaven. You've seen lightning when it comes down and it strikes the earth? He said, I saw Satan fall. He began in heaven. Then he had the time when he was back and forth, like in Job. You know, and he didn't have a job any longer. And God says, uh, what you doing, Satan? He said, well, I'm wandering around to and fro throughout all the earth. He didn't have a job anymore. He didn't have just a, a person walking around just trying to cause destruction. What a terrible thing. What a terrible thing. He said, I saw Satan fall like lightning from heaven. But he says, behold, I give you the authority to trample upon certains, serpents and scorpions. Now, church, that's called the transcendence. There are things that God gives, promised in the Word of God, that He'll also give you. You say, well, He gave that power to them. If you're a child of God and you're, fulfill, you're fulfilling the mission that God's called you to, you have the same power and authority that he gave them you have the promises of God they're not just for them they're for you so when you're walking through life and you're doing what God's called you to do understand this he says I give you authority to trample upon serpents and scorpions over all the power of the enemy all means all and that's all all means over all 
the power of the enemy. Do you feel that? Your perception may be that you don't have that. That's a wrong perception of yourself under God. It's a wrong perception of God. You're limiting what God can do in your life. That's false humility. God didn't call you to that. He doesn't want you lifted up in pride, but he wants you to be everything that he created you to be. Over all the power of the enemy, nothing shall by any means hurt you. Verse 20, nevertheless, do not rejoice in this, that the spirits are subject to you. That's not something that you should be a point of pride. Some of the people today who misuse this, who literally misuse the power of God, are making a name for themselves rather than proclaiming the name of God. And they have been gifted. And that there is power in the name of Jesus. But they make it about themselves. Is that not what Satan did himself? We have power and authority. We are our own mission for God, sent with the power of God. But it's not about us. Not for a nanosecond. Not for a, 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 an inkling of a moment. He says, do not rejoice in this that the spirits are subject to you, but rather because your names are written in heaven. Rejoice that you know God. Rejoice in your salvation. Celebrate what God has done for you. Celebrate what God has provided for you. And as He provides blessings, He'll all also provide protection. Satan grasped for power. The power has been given to us as long as we remain under his authority. Understand your enemy. If we walk in our strength, he's extremely dangerous. He's very good at what he does. So don't play by Satan's rules. Don't fall for his tricks. Let the temptations of this world, let them go. Fight. Fight. Sometimes <clears throat> Satan will come and he'll pit one person against another. And Satan always tries to divide and conquer. Satan always attacks relationships. Ephesians 6 verse 12 says this, For we do not wrestle against flesh and blood. Don't get your eyes off God and get them on somebody else. You're falling for his trap. Don't do it. He said we do not wrestle against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this age, against spiritual hosts of wickedness in heavenly places. That sounds daunting. Ephesians chapter 2 says this. And you, Christian, he made alive who were once dead in your trespasses and sins. You once walked according to the course of this world. According to the prince of the power of the air. That's one of the titles for Lucifer. The prince, by the way, it means ruler, it means commander, it means leader, it means chief. He's very good at what he does. Prince of the power. That's the Greek word, exousia. There are two words in the New Testament for power. One of them is exousia. But that's not God's power. That's deutimus. Exousia is a word that means influence. That means he can influence you. And if he has an influence over you, you can say that he has a power over you. If he tempts you and you give in to it, you have given over, you have given over, you have yielded, you have followed his way, you have fallen into his trap. I've said this many times, I'm going to say it many more. Bad trade. Bad trade. He's the prince of the power of an influence of the air. That's a unique word. It means dense air. 
heir of the lower region. In our world today, we would say thick air, or can I use the word smog with the pollutants, pollutants of the world? That differs from the high air, the clear air, listen to me now, the rare air. Years ago, seven years ago, Lynn and I, in the month of June, went to the Southern Baptist Convention, and I heard John Bassanio, who was the pastor of First Baptist Church of Houston, Texas, and, and I heard him say these words, and it absolutely rocked my heart. What I was going through in that life, I needed that. John Bassanio said this. He said, listen, take the high road. There's not much traffic there. You know what? Take the high road. There's some clear air there. If you're driving the low road, that's Satan's lane. A lot of people like to follow that. It's the way of your own thoughts and your own beliefs and what you want. It's not about serving him and following him and, and letting him lead and let his wisdom be what's in charge. Listen to what Colossians 1 says. I know I'm reading a lot of scripture, but I want you to hear this. This is the powerful word of God. Colossians 1 says this, For by him all things were created that are in heaven and that are on the earth, visible and invisible, whether thrones or dominions or principalities or powers, all things were created by him, through him, listen to me now, and for him. The greatest thing that we can do is come to know God, to enjoy him, and to serve him. Colossians 2.15 says this, having disarmed, oh, he took away their weapons. He's got them now. Having disarmed principalities and powers, he that is Christ made a public spectacle of them, triumphing over them in it. Did y'all get that? He took away their power. He took away their weapons of war. He took them away, and he gave the power, listen, and the authority to the church that we, Christian, you are called to serve the king. That word ambassador that many people have heard, you don't understand. That is a person that is sent with the power of the king to represent him. You represent Christ in this world. How you live your life, how you serve him, is being seen. In heaven, it's being seen by the angels who are clapping and applauding. It's being seen by the demons because they don't understand it. The demons don't have redemption. They don't know. They grasp for power. But we do it out of love. We serve a risen Savior. We are grateful that He is with us. We give over our, all of our allegiance under Him. We deny ourselves because we serve one who deserves so very much. Listen to Romans 8 here. Romans 8 verse 37 says this, Yet in all these things we are more than conquerors. Do you feel like a, you're more than conqueror? I don't care what your perception of yourself is. You don't get a right to judge yourself different from the way God looks at you. You need to see yourself the way God sees you. You need to see Him in His glory. You need to see the, His love for you. You need to see the plans and the purposes that He has for your life. And let that be what you yearn for. Let that be what you want to fulfill. You hear me? We are more than conquerors through Him who loved us. I love what Paul said. I am persuaded. Oh, he had been through some things. He was, a, he was one who, had, who was uh, in allegiance with murder. Yet, Christ changed him, and now all the principalities are coming against him, but he said, I'm persuaded that neither death nor life, nor angels, nor principalities, nor powers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor height, nor depth, nor any other created thing. All is under the Creator God. Any other created thing shall be able to separate us from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus our Lord. So what are we worried about? What are 
we fretting over? Why don't we stand in faith? Why don't we trust God and fall to our knees? Why don't we come to say, as long as He is for us, it doesn't matter who's against us. There's a better way. There's a God way. We may have strayed. The closer you get to God, the stronger temptations will be. You may think the opposite, but I'm here to tell you, when you're far from God, He doesn't have to do much temptations to get you. You're already in the, in the quicksand of sin. But when you start walking with God, Satan's going to come against you. When you start praying and when you start seeking to, to love others the way that he loves them and you yield your life, Satan's going to do everything in his power to divide and conquer. He's off mission. But he said, I have, Paul said, I am persuaded. It won't work. The love of God is greater, church. Ephesians 3.10 says this. To the intent that now the manifold wisdom of God might be made known by the church. Did y'all get that? The manifold wisdom of God might be made known by the church to the principalities and powers in heavenly places. We are the testimony. You remember in the book of Job when Satan was there? The Lord said, uh, have you considered my servant Job? When you're serving, when you're loving, when you're humbling yourself and yielding, when you're trying not to walk in your wisdom and your strength, and your, but you're just simply seeking to follow the wisdom and the ways of the Lord, who's to say God's not bringing up your name? Have you considered my servant? Have you considered Rinda? Have you considered my servant Morgan? Understand, your perception may see that you're, you are small, but you are great in Christ. Great in Christ. You're a child of the King. You are a joint heir with Christ. Living the mission, just as Jesus did. Living the mission that God has placed before you. We are the testimony of God's goodness. And by the way, a testimony cannot be refuted. It cannot. You talk to somebody and you say, I don't know what to say to them. you got a testimony of what God's done for you. How can anybody say that's not true? Because it's yours. Right? We are God's testimony. We live a right relationship with Him and give Him the glory and do not seek the glory for ourselves. But when we lift ourselves up, when we raise our thoughts over the Word of God, when we seek to raise our own authority, when we seek to elevate our own status, or rather serve ourselves rather than serve God, when we desire the things of the earth over the Creator in heaven, when fame and acclaim become our desire, when being heard is more important to us than God being seen, oh, what Satan can do. Here's the path. Matthew 16, then Jesus said to his disciples, if anyone desires to come after me, there's a work of the Holy Spirit. It's called the wooing of the Holy Spirit. It's sometimes called the drawing of the Holy Spirit. Someone asked me one time, says, what does that mean? Tell me what it's like. Tell me, tell, I said, you'll know it. By the way, I've never heard an audible voice, but oh, how my Lord has spoken. By the way, 
He speaks often. I was sitting up there in the balcony in the first service. He said something very fresh to me in the first service. Very fresh, very relevant, and very real to me today. Don't tell me God can't. If you want to follow him, if you to hear that wooing, by the way, that's one wonderful, great gift of God, to hear the wooing of God, to feeling it in your, in your soul, to knowing that it's him, being compelled, being loved, being drawn by him. He said, if anyone desires to come after me, let him deny himself because we get in the way. Deny yourself and take up your cross. That's sacrificial service. It bothers me that there are a lot of people who have made a profession of faith and really what they were saying was, Lord, I want heaven. Lord, I'd like to have all the goodness. I'd like to, I don't want to go to hell. And Lord, I do believe in you. So save me. Thank you. Now leave me alone. I'm going to go live my life the way I want to. We serve the God of the universe who gives us the grace gift of salvation. And we repent of our sins and we come to Him and we give our life to Him. It no longer belongs to us. It is Him. And we love Him. And He loves us. And we also love those that He loves. And as He loves us, he loves all the others. And we take up our cross and we serve them as He took up His cross to serve us. And I, I tell you what, it puts a big question mark over my spirit when I see people who profess to be Christians who are always thinking about ease, who are always thinking about it being easy, who are always thinking about what happens to them and what they want to do for them and I can and I won't and, 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 and I'm not going to. Listen, we serve at His request. It is an honor. And He gave all for us. We have a short time here. We should give our all to Him. Take up your cross daily and follow Him, me, He said. For whoever desires to save his life will lose it. But whoever loses his life for my sake will find it. Here, verse 26. For what profit is it to a man if he gains the whole world and loses his own soul? Or will, what will a man give in exchange for his soul? For the Son of Man will come in his glory, the glory of the Father and with his angels, and then he will reward each according to his works. What will a man give in exchange for a soul? What if you gain the whole world but lose your soul? Bad trade. Bad trade. So Satan takes Jesus up on this high mountain. and He sees all the glories of the earth. And he says, you can have them. They've been given to me. You can have them all. You don't have to go to the cross. You don't have to go through the suffering. You don't have to go through the sacrifice. You can have the world. You can have it all. If you'll bow the knee and worship me. <laughs> Jesus said to him, Away with you, deceiver. Away with you, Satan. For it is written, You shall worship the Lord your God, and Him only you shall serve. Church, you shall worship the Lord God, Him only you shall serve. But Satan buys us with so much less. He doesn't offer the whole world. He doesn't have to. We fall for his tricks. 
We give up so much. He comes with a temptation and offers so much less. And we fall for it. We steal for much less. We cheat for much less. We lie for much less. We covet much less. We chase the things of this world that are so fleeting that will not satisfy. We work for a kingdom that won't last. Bad trade. Bad trade. Bad trade. Yet God has so much more. I hath not seen, ear hath not heard the things that God has prepared for those who love Him. Peace, peace, wonderful peace coming down from the Father above. Living a miracle. Folks, I'm not perfect. I don't think I've ever claimed to be, except in my own heart. What about you? We don't mind lifting ourselves up. Be careful. That's a wrong road. We don't mind tearing someone else down to make ourselves feel better. Be careful. Be careful. Satan will come and say, just cheat on your taxes a little bit. Be careful. Oh, I'll steal from my, my employer. Be careful. It's a trap. It's a trap. I'll lie to protect myself. I'll lie to make myself look bigger and better. Be careful. It's a trap. We must come to a place where we understand that we serve Him and He's okay with us just the way that we are. He loves us and wants to bless us. But if you're here today or if you're watching online and you do not know Jesus Christ as your Savior and Lord, your eternity is in the balance. I cannot tell you how many times I've heard people say, well, I think I'm pretty good. Lucifer was perfect when he sinned. God's love, he wouldn't send me from, he wouldn't send me to hell. Hell wasn't made for you. Hell was prepared for the devil and his angels. It has to be enlarged every time a person dies without knowing Jesus Christ. I can't tell you how many times when I was a child and I did not know Jesus. And the wooing of the Holy Spirit would come. And I'd say, well, I'll do it. I believe, but not yet, not now. Not yet, not now. Delaying. Why would I believe the liar? Why would I not do what God's telling me is the right thing to do? Some people are going to walk into eternity, a forever life. And because they never chose God, they will not know the kingdom of God, they will not know the love of God, they will not know the peace of God, and they will spend their eternity in the absolute opposite of God's love. I would not wish that on my worst enemy. And it doesn't have to be. If you'll just come to Christ, deny yourself, humble yourself, Repent of your sins that separate you from God. Believe and know that Jesus paid the price for you at Calvary. He died so that you can live. He was resurrected so that you can have new life. You can't do it, but He can do it for you. If you'll come and give your life to Him, you can receive all the life that He wants to give. Eternal life, full and free. It's our choice. Be careful the choice you make.
You can gain the whole world, but if you lose your soul, bad trade. Bad trade. 